Hey, it's Jim from Janku, and I'm looking at a Lando-based Drupal website that I have here. Now, we are connecting this Lando site to a remote on Pantheon, and I have made the changes that I wanted locally, so there's some style changes, and then there's some changes to some Drupal components like views, blocks, an entity queue, and a content type, and so we've wrapped each one of those different pieces of functionality up into a feature because this is a Drupal 7 website, and we want to now push some of that change from the local site over to the remote site on a dev environment so there can be some testing and some QA that happens there. Now you may be able to push your code pretty easily with your Lando based project so you could just do something like this if I were to come back over here to my project you can see that you can run a Lando push. Now by default it's going to ask what environment we want to push this to so we're going to push the code to the dev environment. We are not going to push the database at all because we don't want to overwrite any content that might be on that environment, so we'll say none. And we don't want to push our files either because any files that we created is just for test content on our local environment, so we'll select none for that as well. And we've already pushed this change, so I'm just going to press enter here. So if I flip back over here to my Pantheon dev site, we have this site here. If I were to reload this, it still has some of the things from the previous site. So the switcher is still here and it hasn't been switched over to this dot base switcher here. So what we want to do is we want to actually be able to run drush commands on that remote environment. Now we can do that from our Lando base project. So if you're in your terminal in your local project, you could do a Lando drush SA. So this is a way to list all the aliases you have in your project. And by default, you might not actually have these Pantheon aliases if you run this for the first time. You might only see none, self, and default. So if you want to list those additional aliases, you can do drush terminus aliases. So terminus is a Pantheon command line tool that they use to interact with the remote environment. So if I run that Lando terminus aliases command, it goes and it fetches those Drush aliases from our remote site. And then from there, if you were to list your Drush SA, you will see those different environments now. So I might want to clear the caches on just the dev environment. So I can come up here and I can copy this command here that corresponds to the specific site that I want. And then I can do a Lando Drush dev and do a status to start. See so if we can get the status of that remote. And then we could do something like clear all caches. Now if I were to come back here and reload this page, you see here that the dev environment switched. So the CSS got applied because we cleared the caches and now we're seeing this little switcher block down here and it has these dots to switch through. So that's been updated. Great. So now we're seeing some of the changes from our local up on that remote environment and we can do other changes as well. So if we want to enable those blocks like this call to action section that was added down here. So these little blocks here, this is a new section that we added. We can enable those features and we want to enable any of the contributed modules that those features rely on. And then that way we'll have that whole structure built out and we've deployed that with code. So we don't have to go and recreate anything manually on Pantheon. We can actually just use what we have already tracked in our code and it makes the deployment process a little more consistent and a little easier. So we can go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to start with Lando Drush and I'm going to use the enable command and then I'm going to paste all the features that we are enabling. So we prefix each one of our features with the site name. So we start with this TSNE prefix just to distinguish between any contributed or custom modules that you may have. We want to make sure that we have these as specific features. So we have TSNE. We have a new content type called services CTA. We have a new view called services CTA. We actually add an entity queue as well. So that allows the content editors to add things to the queue so they can reorder and remove things so they can determine which items are actually appearing in that three column grid without actually having to write any code or change anything. So that's what we're doing right there. And then we're also enabling a block and that's how it's actually being placed on that page in that specific position. So if we press Lando Drush enable on this, it should go and it should find the dependencies that these features rely on as well. And it'll ask us if we want to enable those too. So let me press enter and show you what that looks like. And so I actually accidentally ran that locally. So on my local computer, those are already enabled, but let's make sure that we have our Drush alias here as well. So I'm going to do Lando Drush with that dev environment alias. And then I'll just say I want to enable and then paste those modules again one more time and press enter. So you can see that it's enabling not only the feature modules that are all prepended with TSNE, but it's actually going through and it's enabling strong arm, 
link, advanced link, entity reference, entity queue, and FE block as well. So these are all dependencies that we downloaded from the contrib universe of Drupal. And some of these modules like FE block, which is a features block, and strong arm we're using to actually wrap up some of these features. Other modules like link and advanced link we're using to extend the content type so we can add special features in there to make the content editing experience a little nicer. So I'm gonna press Y for yes to enable all those. Those are enabled. And then let's just go and let's clear our caches one more time. So I'm gonna come back here and on my dev environment, I'm going to do a CC all. Now, if you go back to the site at this point and you reload, you probably notice that not much has changed. So we're still missing that block there. Now it actually is there behind the scenes, but what's happening is there's no content that's actually been added to that. So let's change that. First thing I'm gonna to have to do is I'm going to have to log into that site. So I can use my Drush to do a ULI or a user login command. And if I run that, it'll give me back a URL that I can use to get into my site. So I'm gonna copy this part of the URL and I'll just come back to my site here and I'll just make sure I log in here. And once you're logged in, I can actually go through and I can add new content. And now we have the services CTA because we added that new feature that actually enabled that through code. So I can go and click on that. And I can copy some of the content from over here. So for instance, I can say about us CTA. Now this is just placeholder content. And then I could come and I could grab some lorem ipsum as well. Now I could select an image and I'll just grab property image here and upload. And we'll say for alternative text for screen readers, we'll say graphic of tall buildings. And then I'll look for a page specifically on here. So we have this advanced link module enabled so I can do a search here and it'll do an autocomplete. So I'm finding the about us page within our site. This will also work with external links, although it won't autocomplete. So you could link to something like google.com if you wanted to. And then come down here and I'll just save this. Now, if I were to go back to the home page, you'll see that's still not here. So we added that content, but we still have to add it to the queue. So I'm going to go to structure, entity queues. And then in here, you'll see that we have this services CTA queue. So I'll come and I'll edit the items in here. And then I'll come and I'll look for the about page that I just added. So I'll add this to the queue and I'll add the item. And then I'll make sure I save the item. And once it's saved, I can go back to the front page here and I can reload. And you can see our first item has been added here. Now it's taking up the full width here since there's not more items. So it adds a little flexibility, but if you add two more items, it'll turn into a three column block just like this. And that should work fine. Now you can see we're just using Flexbox here under the hood. So if you were to come and you wanted to actually resize this, it should break down into a single column here for mobile screens. Now this is set up to be a little more flexible. So it can actually just have a single, it could have two and two columns would actually take up the available space there. And three would just be exactly a three column, just like that. So that's how you go about deploying your code from a local Lando site onto a remote site. The advantages of doing this is you're doing everything in code. So although we are writing some content on the dev site, the point there is that we don't want to track our content between environments. We actually want our content to live on the production site just in case you know that gets ahead of where we are locally. And then we want to deploy the changes of configuration. So we're wrapping those up in features and then we're enabling those using Drush aliases through our Lando based project to actually enable them on the live site. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below and we'd be happy to answer them. All right, thanks.